Ten thousand dollars. That is a lot of money, Jody. Mm, more than I've ever had in my life. I still can't believe it's real. Well, you won't know for sure until you try to cash it. Oh, come on. I'm sure <laughs> Dwight Endicott's check is good in any bank. Anybody who has several million dollars on their walls is bound to have good credit. He's obviously got a very well-developed sense of responsibility, too. Yeah, that's true, because Grace Endicott, I mean, that's not insurance, and she wasn't even sure that the painting was covered. Even if it was, I cannot imagine that any insurance company is going to pay that high of a settlement on an unknown portrait. Well, let's not be so quick to assume that the painting is not valuable, huh? Because after all, the gallery did have a buyer who's willing to pay exactly this amount. Maybe he recognized it as some undiscovered Gainsborough. Look, I may not be an art expert, but I did study art in college, and believe me, that was no undiscovered old master. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't. Hey, did Gavin go with you to the gallery? No, he's uh, meeting Calvin. Does he know about this check? Yes, he does. I saw him on the way home, and he said that this is all the more reason for him to do what he's doing. What's he doing? He's leaving us. He said now that I'm rich, he has to stop being a sponge. Are you serious? You gonna move out and share Calvin's place? Mm-hmm. He's over there right now looking it over. When I don't look at the mess, I'm uh, still not used to being a bachelor. Oh, boy, you weren't kidding. You really are a lousy housekeeper. Yeah, well, I am uh, not this lousy. Oh, get out of my way. Hey, look, uh, just uh, drop the knife, okay? Nobody's gonna get hurt. Drop the gun. Calvin! Damn it! You okay? Yeah, I just saw you couldn't hold on to him for you. Yo, who asked you to play cop? I'm supposed to be the police officer around right here, remember? Aren't you going after him? I sure am. He was nice enough to leave me his ID, Vincent Green, West 5th Street. And look at this. This burglar left more behind than he got away with. Okay, send Tyler in. Tyler, come on in. Sit down over here. I believe you know a few of these gentlemen. I know Mr. Carr and I've met Lieutenant Jackson. All right, well then let me introduce you to Captain George Valducci, Head of Internal Affairs. This is Mr. Ramirez and Mr. Sackheim. They're from the Civilian Complaint Board. Since Captain Valducci will be running this hearing, I'll turn it over to him now. Okay, Detective. We don't enjoy putting a police officer through the ringer, but sometimes it's necessary. Now, let me tell you about the ground rules for this hearing. This is a preliminary hearing, which means it's informal. You'll have every chance to refute the charges made against you. If you can succeed in convincing us that they're without merit, the whole thing will be dropped. If you fail, we have two choices. One is to extend your suspension until we have more evidence, or to recommend a formal hearing, which may result in your dismissal from the Monticello PD. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The voting will be done by Lieutenant Jackson, Mr. Sackheim, Mr. Ramirez, and myself. In the event of a tie, Chief Mallory will decide. As for Mr. Carr... My role is mainly as an observer, Damien. All right, gentlemen, could we proceed with matters? There'll be no personal testimony taken at this hearing. However, there are depositions from the key witnesses. The first being a Mr. individual filed the charges against you. <clears throat> On the night of April 19th, I was standing outside the Chapeau Rouge restaurant after having a drink at the bar. Detective Damien Tyler, not then known to me by name or title, American. I smiled at the woman who was seductively clad. Seductively clad? Are you going to tell me Sammy Wheaton used that kind of language? As you know, Chief. Deposition officer for clarity. All right, 
right, all right. Then read by the deposer to make sure that the intent is identical. Yes, I'm sorry, I forgot. Please continue. Upon perceiving my attention to his escort, Detective Tyler became abusive and violent. Without warning, he struck me with his fist and knocked me down. You stop right there and you've got the whole story. Right, come on, Tyler. Let him finish. Then he grabbed me by the back of my shirt collar, proceeded to drag me down behind the restaurant. There he began to beat me using his fists, his feet, and the lid of a trash can. I do not know how long he beat me in this manner because I was rendered unconscious within the first few minutes. When I woke up in Monticello General, I was informed that I had sustained a serious concussion. Bone fractures, severe internal injuries, end of statement. May I make a comment, sir? Go ahead. Sammy Wheaton provoked that fight. He didn't just smile at that girl. He made several lewd and suggestive remarks. Is that your justification for what followed? No, sir. Uh, I agree I should not have struck Sammy Wheaton, but I only hit him once. I did no further damage. End of statement. I'll read the next statement. Deposition of Poppy Johnson. My name is Poppy Johnson. I am employed as a secretary at the Lucky Salvage Company. On the night of April 19th, I was escorted to dinner by Detective Damien Tyler. When we left the restaurant, a young man made some remark which I did not hear, but which made Mr. Tyler very angry. He knocked him to the ground and then dragged him behind the building. When I went to see what was happening, I saw Mr. Tyler kicking the young man repeatedly in the side and on the head. Oh, come on, sir. May I ask why these witnesses aren't here to make these accusations uh, to my face? We can't subpoena witnesses without a court order, Mr. Tyler. And this is not a judicial matter, not yet. Relax, Damien. It's going to be all right. Unable to watch anymore, I left. A few minutes later, Mr. Tyler emerged from the alleyway and said something about having taken care of the problem. I insisted on going straight home. End of statement. Well, she didn't tell him the best part about what happened when we got to her house. What do you say? Nothing, sir. Then I take it you deny her allegations? Of course I deny it. Now, what about this, Detective? I don't know. What is it? That's a picture. Do you know the people in it? Yes, I do. The uh, gentleman is myself, and the lady is Miss Poppy Johnson. And what are you doing in that picture, Detective? I'm trying to take the coat off uh, Poppy's back. It's the coat that Eddie Lorimer gave to me. Now, why would Eddie Lorimer do something like that? He said he wanted to help me out of a jam. He gave me this coat to try to bribe uh, Miss Johnson in order to make a retractor statement against me. Is that what you're doing in the picture? Oh, now, okay. come on. I object to that for crying out loud. You're not his defense attorney. All right, I'll skip that question. I'll read the next deposition. Second deposition of Poppy Johnson. On May 12th, Detective Damien Tyler showed up at my office and said he had a present for me. He said he knew I always wanted a mink coat. And he bought this one at a bargain price from a furrier named Tonio. He hinted that if I wanted the coat, I should change my story about our date. I'm sorry to say that I agreed because I really wanted that coat. And by a strange coincidence, Mr. Lorimer just happened to be there with a camera to record the event. Now, look, this is obviously a frame-up. You know very well he didn't buy that fur coat, not on his salary. Well, apparently he ordered it just the same. My office checked out this Tony O'Furs. And here's a bill of sale. Oh. As you can see, it was signed by D. Tyler. Bill of sale. Come on, baby, have a little more of this stuff. This is terrific. It's imported all the way from San Jose. <laughs> I just don't see why you're celebrating so soon. Because I finally got that bum exactly where I want it. By the way, you did a terrific job. You and Sammy, I drink to your cheers. <laughs> you went to an awful lot of trouble just to get back at one cop. <clears throat> you know me. Nobody crosses Eddie Lorimer. You see? People are going to have to learn that. The more people learn that, the less people are going to try. Does that make sense? I guess so. Nobody crosses Eddie Lorimer. You, uh, you will remember that, won't you, baby? just awful, Nancy. Uh, three patterns, and I can't decide. <laughs> what? 
Why don't I just move it over on the table and let you have a better look at it? Oh, that's a very good idea. You know, two of them are so similar. All you really have to decide between might be just the color. Hmm? Oh, yes, but I don't know what color to choose. I mean, I don't know what color my linen will be, or, or which should I do first? Oh, Nancy, <laughs> I don't know the first thing about housekeeping. Well, I don't know what to do. Just pick the one that you like most. Don't worry about the linens. <gasps> uh, as a matter of fact, the linens don't cost nearly as much as the china would, unless you go into something like antique lace or something like that. Oh, well, no, no, I'm not going to do anything like that. No, I'd like something very simple. I, I don't know, Nancy, really. Please, help me decide. I don't know. Well... If I were to choose, I would choose this one, because I like it. It's a neutral tone. It is pretty, and I think anything would look pretty on it. Mm, yes, you've got a point. I, I don't know, though. I, I like this one. I mean, it's so colorful. It's fresh and bright. Okay. Obviously, you're leaning towards that, and it is pretty. I agree. Mm. So why don't you get it? Yes. Okay, that's settled then. <laughs> Listen, tell me, do you have this um, pattern? Yes, I think so. Oh, great. Wonderful, then. My decision has been made. <laughs> However, it's not an open stock. That means you'll have to wait a while for it. Oh, well, how long? Oh, at least six weeks, maybe eight. Oh, no. I can't wait that long. I, I can't wait that long for anything. Well, maybe I could get it for you in a little less time. No, no, no. Forget it. Look, just forget it. I need something tonight, you know, that I can put on my dining room table tonight. Let, let me see what I can do. Jinx, what is it? Nancy, I... I saw Miles today. You did? Yes, I did. I, I told Derek I was never, ever going to go into another doctor's office again, but I thought I should. I thought that, that he should see me and, and take another blood test. And? And I'm worse. I'm much worse, Nancy. I... You don't even look ill. Well, I feel awful. As a matter of fact, I feel weak. I don't even know how I'm standing. I, I, I think it's out of sheer stubbornness, that's all. Is there anything I can do? No. No, Nancy, you've been wonderful. Look, I'm sorry. I think maybe... Mrs. Mallory. Huh? I can get the set you want from our downtown store now. Can you wait? Yes. For a little while. The check. There's no question in my mind. Yeah, I don't see any reason why you should turn it down either, Jody. I think it'd be a very foolish thing unless you uh, were convinced the police were going to recover the painting. Well, now there's a thought. Mm. What happens if they find the painting and you've turned your check into lots of pretty dresses and jewelry and so forth? I'll just give it back for the portrait. Well, I've got a very sensible idea. Why don't you take the check, put it in the bank, let it earn interest, right? And then if they recover the portrait, you have it and the interest. Well, now, that is a very sensible idea. Congratulations, well, thank you. doctor. Thank you. How about I just deposit 9800 I mean, there's this gorgeous dress in Benny. Oh, <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Nancy. Oh, hello, Jody. Hello, Jody. Hello, Nancy. Uh, Nicole, is, is Miles there? Yes, yes, he is. Did you want to speak to Miles or Dr. Kavanaugh? Exactly. It's uh, Jinx. Uh, we were shopping and uh, she became ill. Oh, um, hold on, Nancy. It's Jinx. Yes, Nancy, what's happened? Uh, I'm mild. It's uh, Jinx. And, um, well, she was so tired. She, she almost collapsed. I, I brought her back to her place and she's had some of her medicine. And uh, right now she seems to be asleep. All right, I'll be right over. Can you stay with her till I get there? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Nancy. I'm on my way. Goodbye. Oh, I've got to leave. Oh, darling, do you want me to go with no, you? No, I think it's better if I uh, go alone. You can't do me a favor. Call Derek. Uh, tell him to get home at once. Tell him it may not be serious, but why take a chance? Oh, yes, of course. I'll do that. Captain, just check it out. Do whatever you think is necessary. I don't care what this piece of paper says. I did not buy a mink coat at Tony's first or any place else. I couldn't even afford it. 
And if I could, I can't think of a woman that I would give a mink coat to. Listen, gentlemen, this has got to be the damnedest, most complete frame I think I've ever seen. And I can't believe you're going to sit there and tell me that you can't comprehend this. I'm trying to deal with the facts on hand, Chief. Oh, the Are you facts. I have no bias in this case. Gentlemen, I think we're still short on information. Well, then you tell me how Eddie Lorimer got a hold of that coat if he bought it. We only have Mr. Tyler's word that Eddie Lorimer delivered. Oh, come on. I told you it was Eddie Lorimer. He knocked at the door. I answered the door. He was standing there with a mink coat in a box. Now, what if that coat was delivered to your address by the furrier and then intercepted by Lorimer? All right, gentlemen, we've got a stalemate. I guess so. I'm going to recommend that uh, we postpone the hearing. Sir, can I ask what's going to happen to my job in the meantime? Your suspension will be extended for a two-week period, or more if it's necessary. That is not fair. Keep quiet, Tyler. Gentlemen, let's take a vote. Good night, boss. Good night, Poppy. Poppy, do me a favor. I'll get that phone for you. Mr. Lorimer's office? Who? One moment, please. It's Vince. What's he doing calling at this hour? Oh, no, give me that phone. I'll see you later, OK? Yeah, right, I'll pick you up. What the hell are you doing? Putting on a pair of pants. Eddie, I gotta get out of town. The heat's right behind me. What'd you do now, Vince? It was just a quick little job, Eddie, but the guy who lived there came home all of a sudden and... You didn't do anything to him, did you? He did something to me. He snatched my wallet. What are you telling me? You lost money on the heist, you banana? It's worse than that. My wallet had my ID in it. That's why I better get out of town. You know, you should paint a big sign right across your forehead. I am a thief. Please call the police. No joke, Eddie. Help me. I need, I need some traveling money. Hey, what do I look like? The Bank of Switzerland over here? All right, all right. I'll, I'll call Lester. I'll arrange a little loan for you. You pick it up at the same joint, all right? Thanks, Eddie. Damn amateurs. <laughs> There you are. I was beginning to wonder if you were even coming home. I still have to pack, don't I? See, I told you he's leaving us. <laughs> I take it you liked Calvin's apartment, Gavin. Well, it's a little messier than I'm used to. Lamps overturned, drawers emptied onto the floor. What? Actually, Calvin made it very exciting for me. He had a burglar waiting for us there when we arrived. <sighs> are you serious? Yep. Some poor sucker tried to rob a cop. But you weren't hurt, were you? No, the burglar was the only one that was hurt, and all he had done to him was a ripped pants pocket. He lost his dignity and his wallet. <laughs> For heaven's sake. Gavin, you were hurt. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's just a little bruise. It, he slammed me up against the wall when I tried to be heroic. A little bruise my foot. Let me get something for that. Oh, here, honey, I'll get it. You stay with Gavin. <sighs> you know, this wouldn't happen if you lived here with us. Why don't you think about it? I think I'm beginning to get a little weak. I, maybe it's a delayed reaction. Are you going to be all right? No, I think I'm going to faint. Oh! Oh, Gavin! <sighs> oh, I love you so much. I don't want you to leave. Don't worry. You could never lose me. Listen. Promise me you'll be careful, okay? And uh, don't try to be a hero anymore. If I wanted to be a hero, I'd go with Calvin to find the burglar. No, I'm glad I didn't. I ain't gonna do nothing now either. Put the cuffs on him, Alex. I said, don't move! Cuff him, Alex. You take him down and put him in the car. I'm gonna look around this place just to uh, see if he's got anything of mine. You're the guy in that apartment. 
Yep. How do you like that? A lot. to police headquarters. I got the place bugged, didn't you know that? Police headquarters? You're kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. I got a friend of mine who we planted down there. He told me everything that happened at the hearing. And? They really believed what we told him, huh? What's this we stuff? I do a single, kid. You signed the statement, Sammy Wheaton signed the statement. You keep me out of it, okay? You know what I mean. They took our word for it, huh? Of course. Why shouldn't they? It's the truth, isn't it? Come on, you saw that punk cop beat Sammy up, didn't you? Don't you ever forget it, either. I said it to the cops, didn't I? Where'd you put my special bourbon? You put it under B. Listen, you said it in writing. Now, the next time, you're gonna have to say it in person. Next time? So they didn't kick him off the force? No, they suspended him for two weeks, pending further investigation. So you better stay on your toes, because that means there's gonna be a lot of little guys in blue running around here asking questions. They make me so nervous, Eddie. I I get the shivers whenever they start to talk to me. I don't know. I, hey, I... hey, 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 come on. Calm down now, huh? Whenever you get the shivers, you think about that beautiful black mink coat draped on your gorgeous body. As soon as this thing is over, it's going to be yours. You want me to get that? No, no, I'm expecting a call. I know what it is. Go make some coffee. Do something. Uh, we're all out of coffee. Well, go crush some grapes. Make some wine. I don't know. Do something. Yeah, hello. Where you been? I've been waiting all day here. Doing? I'm waiting for you. Look, if you've come here to pick a fight with Mr. Lorimer, then all I can say hey, is... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Take it easy. I'm a peace-loving man. And I happen to be a private citizen at the moment. I came to see you, not Eddie Lorimer. Well, if you came over here to bother me Hold about... Hold on, relax. I said I came to see you. That's all. Cross my heart. See me about what? Well, I just wanted to tell you that I'm not angry with you for what you did. Really? No, I can't blame you for that. I understand. I can't blame you any more than I could blame you for that thunderstorm we had last night. Natural phenomenon. Well, look, honey, I don't know what kind of game you think you're playing, Pop, but... I... why don't you go to dinner with me tonight? Are you kidding? No, look, I promise not to hit anybody. I don't care what the circumstance is. Well, no, I couldn't do that. Are you crazy or something? Why would you want to see me after... Oh, go on and get out of here, huh? You need your head examined. Hey, come on. You had fun last time, didn't you? I know you were probably supposed to have fun, but I think you and I were pretty good together. No, and uh, if you don't mind, I uh, I, I have a, a letter to write and, and hey, I... Wait a minute, you said you like Italian food. What about Garibaldi's? I know what you're after. You think that you can talk me into changing my story, don't you? About 
beating up that guy and about uh, being bribed with that fur coat, no. don't you? No, 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 no. That's not it at all. In fact, I promise not to say anything about that. I just want to get to know you a little better. I want to know why one of the most beautiful women I've ever met in my life would do this to me. Damien. I, uh... I don't know if I can, but, uh... Call me later, okay? You're the best policeman in the whole world. Yes, it's true, it's true. <laughs> I must say, though, luck did have a little to do with it. <laughs> You're lucky he tried to rob your apartment. I hope you got back everything he tried to take from you. Well, actually, he didn't take anything from me. As a matter of fact, I ended up with something of his. His wallet. <laughs> See, Calvin grabbed him and ripped his pocket, wound up with his wallet, his money, and his ID. The latter being the most important, actually. It uh, helped us apprehend him pronto. And it was the same crook that robbed the art gallery. Isn't that something? Yeah, I just... I never thought I was going to see this painting again. Mm. It's in such good condition. He didn't damage it at all. Mm. Except it's a little dusty. Well, he wasn't the neatest housekeeper, Mrs. Good. <laughs> I can clean it. Why don't I take it to the kitchen right now? That's a good idea. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And why don't we sit down? Sit down, Calvin. All right. So, Calvin, what about the thief? Did you get a fix on him? Yeah, his name is, uh, Vincent Green. And, uh, I guess where he works when he's not robbing uh, apartments or art galleries. I give up. Have you ever heard of the Lucky Salvage Company? I have. Yeah, well, it's, uh... No surprise to me, most of the punks in this town have worked for Lucky Mitchell at one point or another. Yes, but now they're working for Eddie Lorimer. Eddie Lorimer? What is... Never mind. As long as I have my painting back, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the only painting you recovered? You didn't find any of the other ones? None. I've, uh, already called Mr. Endicott and told him the bad news. And the good news, of course. The good news being that he gets his $10,000 back. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> oh, mm. Easy come, easy go. Mm. I better go call him. Good idea. That wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. Why not? Well, that wasn't just dust on there. There was some sort of metal particles or something. Particles? Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Now, where would a painting pick up metal particles? I don't know. Why would Vincent take the portrait back to the scrapyard where he worked? Oh, hi, Grace. It's Jody Travis. Ah, oh, hello, Jody. I'm sure you've heard the wonderful news. Yes. In fact, I have the painting here with me now. It's a miracle. Uh, my sentiments, exactly. Listen, Grace, I'm sorry they didn't find any of your paintings. Oh, that's all right, dear. Um, we're just very happy that you have your portrait back. My father and I felt so guilty about it. Well, the reason I'm calling is about the check your father gave me. Um, I'd like to return it as soon as possible. That's all right. Don't bother. Just tear it in two and we'll forget about it, all right? Uh, just a moment, please. Let me talk to him. My father just walked into the room, Jody, and he'd like to say hello. Just a second. Hello, Jody. My congratulations. Oh, thank you. I overheard what Grace was saying about the check. You know, there is an alternative. You could just keep the money and give us the painting. What? Strangely enough, we heard from that man who wanted to buy it. He's still very eager. Um, Mr. Endicott, I'm sorry. I feel the same way about the painting. Yes, I see. In fact, now that it's back where it belongs, um, I'm never going to let it out of my sight again. I understand perfectly, my dear. Well, I hope we'll be seeing you and your family soon. Goodbye, my dear. Bye. Stubborn little wench. It's just no use, Father. We're back to where we were. No, there's nothing we can do about it. We simply have to accept the situation. Yes, but can we really do that? We tried to buy the damn thing. We tried to steal it. What's left? Burn down the apartment house? Oh. You're awfully calm about it. I'm merely being realistic. Sooner or later, she'll forget the painting is there. It'll just become part of the decor, the way most paintings do. Yes, sooner or later, someone is going to remark on the painting. Someone is going to remark on the woman in the painting, and it will arouse her curiosity. You're a pessimist, Grace. Father, one casual word could spark an explosion that would oh, completely... Oh, now, don't be melodramatic. She's just a naive young girl, interested in her boyfriend, her clothes, her makeup, all the things young girls care about. Not explosions. I'm going to the gallery. I've got to get that painting. Oh, just a minute. A little more lipstick. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. 
Oh, do I look so grim? I'm just going to the supermarket. You could send out if you knew what you wanted. I do. I just want to make sure everything's fresh. I don't care if it comes out of a can. No, no. Nothing is going to come out of a can for tonight's meal. Uh-huh. Oh. No, it's okay. I just got a little dizzy. I'm all right. The hell you're all right. Derek, why does this have to be happening to me? Listen, you're not strong enough to do this. You're really not. Oh, yes, I am, I'm really. Gonna... No, 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 please, please. I'll, I'll be all right. I, I'm just going to go into the bathroom. I'll put a little cold water on my face. I'll be fine. Oh, jinx. Look, go on ahead without me. It's all right. I'm not going to go anywhere without you. All right. Yes, Nicole. Yes, who is this? This is Derek. Listen, I, I know Miles isn't there, is he? No, no, he's at the hospital right now making his rounds. Well, have you got any idea what time he gets back to the office? Well, it's never exactly at the same time, but it's usually around noon. Why? Do you need to reach him? No, no, I don't now, but I, I wanted to know what his schedule was just in... just in case. No phone calls, no interruptions till this meeting's over. Okay? Yeah, okay. So, what's this all about? I got a message for you. From who? Miss Endicott. Well, come on, come on. What's the message? What does she want? You. That's the message. Just the way she gave it to me. It's been a